Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Tofan at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to the Outer Worlds. Last time we uh, found the schematics for a rather interesting um, heat pistol, something like that. It looks really, really cool, but um, I also changed my equipment loadout just a little bit. I'm now equipped with a pistol. This this thing. And ooh, there's definitely there's marauders here. And boop. And boop, boop, boop. It's actually pretty good. There we go. And then this guy. Okay, if I if I'm able to hit him in the face, there we go. I am. I am. Thank, thanks for asking. This is one hefty pistol. I like it. I've uh, equipped a few uh, molds on my guns as well. Now, for some reason, I can't swap out the plasma carbine now. Or maybe that was because... Ah, it's because it, it has... Yeah, I've equipped it. That's why I can't change it. Also, turned my vortex maze into a plasma weapon and it's... It's just, just gone through the roof. So, uh, I think for now, the setup works pretty well. Uh, and we'll see what ooh, we'll see once we move a bit further if I need to change anything. But for now, pistol. I like pistol. Pistols are cool. Pistols are like I feel like a gunslinger. So that's the lab from before. That's the lab we uh, cleared out two episodes ago. But uh, today we still need one more quest uh, in Roseway. So outlaws are friendly, right? They they like us now, right? They do. Hello, hello, outlaws. I'm really happy I'm here. I'll take your necklace, thank you. And and the stuff from the dead scientist for some reason. Just don't leave your corpses hanging around here. That's just weird. So there's a few more buildings at the very south of the map. I'm just gonna here we go. shoot. Oh god. Let him have it. There's there's raptodons. I think I'm gonna have to swap over to the plasma rifle because these guys. These guys are pretty hefty. It's dead. Never mind, it's dead. <laughs> it's always so dramatic when I pull out that vortex maze. They're all dead. Never mind. That's that's fine, I guess. Can I open this up? I mean I can pick it. There we go. I've never been able been needing to use Mac picks. Which is really weird. More dead people. Resident. Scientists, a vendor, and a workbench. But I just use the workbench, so don't really need that. So the first message on the terminal in this room, this is the terminal of Mr. Han, uh, just describes the fact that the raptodons don't seem to procreate as much as they want them to. And then the second one comes from a person called O'Malley, uh, who doesn't really like the board, apparently. So he's just threatening them, and that's basically it. So. Nothing too fancy. I'm trying to uh, stop reading just everything out loud because I'm starting to realize that that might be a little bit boring boring to watch. So I'm just recapping it after the facts. Um, cigarette case. Well, since we killed all the raptodons, that's fine, I guess. Anton doesn't care anymore either. Um, automated security warning. Oh, arm electric fence. Please remember to disable the electric fences before attempting to enter Raptodon pens, okay. But, oh, shouldn't have probably done that. I can just turn that on, that's that's fine. I'm gonna break my ankles again. There we go. Good as new. And an outlaw sniper that just died here. Yeah, he wasn't really smart now, was he? But, cigarette case. There we go. This cigarette case is metal lined and embossed with an iconic rendering of the hope. The name Lillian is, in, is signed on the inside of the metal lid. Commissioned by Space's Choice for the founding day anniversary. Promotion honoring the lives lost with the hope. Nothing like a good smoke to help you remember someone dying in the airless void of space. Gasping for breath in their last moments. Smoke box. Stinks like Raptodon though. So we've retrieved that. That's good. And now we need to bring that back. I mean, we're right there. Shouldn't be that much of a problem. Um, lots of dead... Uh, outlaws though, so that's not, not that. Ooh, music box. Tech kit and a silver tongue kit. Some nice mods if I want to uh, do anything with that. And let's get back to the side entrance of the lab and talk to Lillian. Seriously, don't get yourself killed. It's a nice cigarette case, but it's still just a cigarette case. 
Well, your odd law friends kind of helped us there. I don't think there's any way to get your cigarettes out. No, I've got some good news. There we go. You're shitting me. Uh, not, not really. It occurs to me if I could get this when you couldn't, I bet you couldn't take it from me. Why would I do that? Um, I wasn't saying it wasn't a hassle, but here it is, safe and sound. You ain't so bad. Here's something for the trouble. So we got what exactly? 10,000 experience, that's a lot, but did we get anything else? Money? So we lost the case. Did, did we get anything in return? It takes a long what, 625 bit cartridges and the anarchist's cookbook. What's that? Oh wow, it's a weapon! The anarchist's cookbook. Great for cooking anarchists. It's 244. This looks badass. It's like a variation on the grenade launcher, I think. So it's a heavy weapon with plasma damage. The anarchist's cookbook. Um, does any of you want to swap out for something fancy? Maybe the light machine gun swap that out for the anarchist cookbook? There we go. And then we have that pulse hammer, but I'm wondering what the sword is going to do in her hands. Because the sword isn't actually that much worse, so let's just give them all the big weapons. There we go. And now let's head back to... No, wait, I need to check my journal, because there was a one quest... The cleaning machine, there we go. Now that you have the acid steeper part needed to modify Sam, all that remains is to return to the unreliable and swap it out with... Oh, that's for Sam, okay. Okay. Um, then Vol's Vulcan's hammer first. You found Orson's schematic there from Force, and now system weapons manufactured. They are almost certainly contraband. And that's probably also one of the science weapons, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so let's go back to Orson. So, we have the schematics, but alone we can't make those. So let's talk to Orson. Oh, hello. Uh, why do you seem familiar? Have we met? We, we did. I can't say you look familiar, because you have that weird mask on your face. Um, <laughs> no, who are you again? Uh, you asked me to grab your prototype schematics from storage. Ah, yes. Very good. And have you done that? Uh, y yeah, got them right here. What a relief. You hold months of work in your hands. Uh, I want that weapon. Uh, hold on, force weapons are contraband. Why didn't you turn this in when you found it? Anton would have just given them to Porter without a second thought. What a waste of potential that would have been. These are valuable schematics. I could sell them for quite the profit. Hmm, sadly true. Contraband does tend to fetch a high price among the colony's ne'er-do-wells. So be it. I'll buy them off of you. Okay, Auntie Cleo. Hmm. I could hand them over for extra money and then I need to pay Gladys anyway, but can't they, he make the weapon for me? Because he probably can make the weapon. Much obliged. Here are your bids. Now, let's see. A hundred. Here. Attach this, twist that, apply a little pressure. A hundred? Voila. I can finally call this little side project complete. Thank the law. Oh. Hmm. I can't be caught with this. Uh, you take it. If R&D buys the schematics from me, perhaps I'll get you the first model, hot off the presses. I'll, uh, call you? Yes, I'll call you. Wait. I did get the ultimatum, right? I think I got, I got the weapon. I think I got the weapon. I, did I get a weapon? Got a lot of experience. I think, I'm pretty sure, I lost the force pistol schematics, but if I check my inventory, I wanna, I wanna see, is that? And the reputation goes up again. Yay. I have no idea what effect that has, but yay. Ooh, there it is. Ultimatum. This scary and powerful handgun is a standard issue for Earth Directorate soldiers and is made by the weapons conglomerate force who owns their own colony in the Septera system. This looks like a cool little gun. Force. This thing. I thought the security guy reacted to that for a second. I was really worried. Um, but that wraps up our business 
in Roseway, I think. With that final quest done and a little fiery pistol in her hand. So you want to test this out, corporate recruit. I could just stick this, like, underneath your helmet and pull the trigger to see what happens. No? Okay, your loss. You have acquired snake skin. What? Well, your face is a sight for sore ocular processors, Captain. Or rather, your headgear is. Uh, okay, I, for some reason we acquired a bunch of items I already had, but if I go up, I should be able to plug that thing into the SAM unit, right? So, talk. Install the acid steeper. Okay. Initiating initialization sequences. Greetings, customer. This SAM unit is unable to locate your registered information. Would you like to register your Sam? Ah, uh, yes. Registering new owner, Captain. Um, well, welcome to the crew, Sam. Sam units live to clean and clean to live. So, did I just make a new companion? I think I did, bye Sam. Um, what's this? Just an empty bin. Um, Sam? Do, do you want to have a, a a chat? Sam? Greetings, customer! Every Sam unit comes lean, mean, and ready to clean. Can you do anything else and see? Good work, Sam! Thank you, customer. Sam. We guarantee you it's the only sanitation and maintenance unit you'll ever need. Uh, oh, okay, so so where did you come from, Sam? All Sam units travel fully assembled in a 12 by 12 corrugated steel box. Uh, uh, okay, I mean, I want to know more about you. Did you know Sam units are capable of equipping regulation-grade flamethrower nozzles? Upgrade your attachment today and get to firing away. Okay, that sounds great. That sounds really cool. Can I get to know more about that? The flamethrower thing. That sounds really good. Apparently not. Back to work, Sam. Is that the flamethrower nozzle or is that just... Do you use that for cleaning? He definitely uses that for cleaning. Okay. Felix, what are you? your thoughts on our newest member? Good to see you, boss. Uh, for some reason, I'm on top of a uh, chair. Don't mind me. I like to talk to people from an elevated position. So, how did you end up on the Groundbreaker? Didn't I tell you? I'm secretly the chairman's orphan child, abandoned at birth in the back bays. Oh, what a snarky response. And then you were raised by a pack of sprats, right? That's right. Can't get anything past you, boss. Honestly, before you picked me up, I was living in the back bays. Spent my whole life up there, watching ships roll in and take off. I always wondered when my ship would come. I was what folks on the Groundbreaker call a stowaway. Means I was invisible. Life carried on for everybody else, but not for me. I had to make my own way. Sounds kind of sad, but um, I have a hard time believing you were invisible to anybody. Yeah, because I got sick of being ignored. Got sick of being a nobody. So yeah, I made some noise. Got in a couple scraps. Nobody else in the Groundbreaker is going to look after you. So you had to look after yourself. Learn that real quick. I mean, I did give you some nice armor and, and, and weapons, so, I mean, are you happy to be with us? Um, maybe you should have kept your head down. No. Halcyon's got enough obedient little workers. If I never got in that scuffle with my old foreman, you and I never would have met. You'd be off having adventures without me, and I'd still be working on the docks. Hauling boxes was about the only work I could find. Hated every second of it. Foreman and I never got on. Okay, so the incident with the tossball stick. Could be I was overreacting. A better man might have turned the other cheek. Exercised a little bit of that, what's the word? Restraint. But on the other hand, broadsiding the jackass with a tossball stick, that felt good. That felt real good. You want to try it. Well, I, I have something uh, spe special for that. I have like a stick with grindy things on top of it. Um... You couldn't have been diplomatic about it? Yeah, I mean, in theory. But I wouldn't have felt half as good. Good point. I caught a real lucky break. If you hadn't picked me up, I'd still be back at the docks. 
waiting for the day my ship arrives. You keep saying that, um, you'd probably be in a jail cell. Thanks for the story, Felix. Thanks for listening, boss. Let's get going. There we go. Let's just keep it simple. Don't need to chastise him or anything. I need to get off this chip. Hi, Sam, please calm down. Holy. Don't, don't spray me, please. Okay. So let's put the gun away because I'm, I'm just running around with that in my hands. But skill and perk points. Oh, and there's red numbers because I'm not drugged out at the moment. Interesting. Um, so I'm guessing I should probably focus on filling up the tech and dialogue trees first. Because if I do that, so let's put seven points into tech. So from now on, I can just put in singular points and see what I want to do specifically. And then the three last points into, no, no, not, not the persuade, into dialogue. There we go. There we go, let's apply that. And then we can pick another perk. Hmm, restore some health whenever you kill an enemy. That is actually really cool as well. But for now, I think I'll keep reducing my uh, weight consumption. Although I'm pretty, I'm doing pretty good at that point. So yeah, 15% health restored per kill. There we go. There we go. I don't know about Felix and Parvati. Seems like they're still, yeah, waiting for their next perk point. Okay, then I'm guessing we need to travel and uh, get out get out of here. So let's go back to the Groundbreaker and talk to Gladys, because Gladys is going to get us uh, to where we need to go next. I think it was Monarch, right? We'll see. So back on the Groundbreaker, I think, well, we don't have anything to give Gladys, but we've accrued enough money to actually give her the, I think it was 10,000 bits. I think I can do that, so let's just head down there first and give her what she wants. Gladys, I got something for you. Have you had a moment to look into that little opportunity I told you about on Roseway? You don't hurry up. Someone will get to snooping around there before you do. Well, I found a lot of things. I investigated that distress signal. What's that? Speak up now. Um, about the secrets you asked me to look for. What'd you turn up? So, I found a toothpaste formula, but then I unfound it. Well, that's just... Just swell, sweetheart. Good for you. And, and then I, I also found some research on Raptodon Musk, but I, I found another buyer. A shame you didn't visit old Gladys first. That would have fetched a good price. I may have thrown in a batch of my famous sugar cookies just to sweeten the deal. And, and then, if Anti-Cleo's exporting wraps from Monarch, golly me, someone's going to be in the soup when they get caught. And, and then I found a prototype weapon schematic from Force, but I, I, I lost it. Bless your slippery little fingers. Isn't that just a shame? Prototype schematics go for a fair handful of bits around here. And I only got like a hundred of them, so I think that's it. Darnation. It sounded like a gold mine. But maybe that's just my old hopes getting in the way. I suppose it can't be helped. Law bless you for doing the legwork, sweetie. Don't forget your pal Gladys now. You can come visit any time. That, that apparently increased reputation. Um, I've gained purple berry bunch and 375 bits. But I have enough bits now to buy the stellar baked navki anyway, so there we go. Fantastic. Do be careful with it, dear as these keys tend to be a tad hard to acquire. You should have a chat with Lilia Hagen in the sublight offices. She's a dear. You'll love her. Now, was there anything else? Uh, n no. Um, I, I mean, do you have anything interesting to sell, well, perchance? Well, kettle off that girl who runs the pub. She's a fierce arm wrestler, but she's no match for your pal Gladys. So she apparently has restricted stock. She might have opened that up to me if I hadn't sold everything I had already. Um, archive cartridge. Ooh, wait a second. Wait a second. This might be interesting. So, battered Mardet datapad. An old datapad once used by the groundbreaker Mardet security forces. From the accumulated dust and grime, this hasn't been accessed for over a decade. In hope of finding clues to a forgotten cache of goods they can sell, I'll buy that. 
The old data pad contains incident reports from various Mardet security patrols. Most are details of simple finds and dust-ups between the crews of Wildcat freighters and corporate haulers. Two entries have been marked for later review. August 7, 2344, responded to a code ID 10T at the Lost Hope. Vera asked us to bounce some back bay rat that got himself soaked in Spectrum Red, so that's vodka. Drunken Fool got into a scuffle with one of the engineer Tennyson's people. We tossed the Rungle Beach back down to the base, an asshole fought us the entire way, telling us we'd be sorry once he controlled the hammer's power. If this is some new hammersmith marketing stunt, I'm complaining to Sanita, so that might be the Vulcan's hammer. And then a bit later on October 25th on the same year, had another run-in with the Rungle... Rungle... Rungleech? Rungleech from the Lost Hope. Don't know how the uppity piker crawled out of the back base without us noticing. Locked himself into the repair bay off of Dock Slip 13 and refused to come out. Kept raving about the weapon's chaotic beauty or some shit while we were trying to talk him out. Had to break off when our shift ended. Hullheads gotta come out eventually. Docking Slip 13 into the repair bay. Okay, interesting. And there we have Hephaestus Mining Archive Cartridge. Uh, it can be viewed using the Captain's Terminal on the Unreliable. We'll do that as well then. Interesting. So that is good, I suppose. I can sell her a few things, but I don't know. It doesn't seem like there's plenty I can sell her. Most of these things I want to actually keep, so... So there we go. Hey boss. Review the Hephaestus Mining Archive. Of terror on Monarch. Kind of an expert. I'm gonna be able to step foot on a whole other planet. I know Monarch's a moon, but I think it counts anyhow. Of course it counts, Parvati, so... The Repair Bay. The Repair Bay. Is it... Who are you? Martin Callahan. Is it just me or is Groundbreaker feeling extra chilly? Maybe you ought to help yourself to a piping hot frozen dinner. Oh, it's Martin. Hey, Martin. Still wearing the hat? How observant. I'm authorized to state that this uniform is more than headgear. It's a state of mind. And our customers know the difference. Oh, and it's not the best choice. It's Spacer's choice. Taste the freedom. A lot of slogans to keep track of. Sometimes I forget. Okay. Um, ever been to Atchwater? Heard of it. My orientation Aetherwave showed that famous Saltuna cannery. Which I'm sure smells as good as it looks. Basically, yeah. Um, they're struggling, but they have good hearts. Yeah. I hope they're gonna be okay. That's a spacious choice, Spear. Take what you have, polish it up, and make the best of it. So, what can I get you? Some soap? Everyone loves soap. Everyone will love you for using it, too. Wow, this guy is not enthusiastic at all. I've got to ask you about the hat. I'm bound to satisfy headgear-related inquiries. Please send any complaints to our consumer care headwear division. Um, speak up, I can't hear you. Yes. It's not the best choice, it's Spacer's choice! <laughs> Taste of freedom! Yes. Thank you. That was awesome. Where can I get a hat like that? You would never ask if you knew what it's like in here. <laughs> I mean, why anyone can be a Spacer's Choice Consumer Relations Choice Specialist. Just keep your nose clean and aim for the moon. Oh, this is awesome. This is awesome. You're doing all riding there. Oh, I'm having a stellar day. And not just because I'm legally obligated to say so. Almost as stellar as a spacer's choice is affordable. Uh, can you see in there? I can see all of the top quality merchandise in the spacer's choice catalog. Which is available here at a reasonable price. Well I must say he's persistent. How do you brush your teeth? Yes, keep going! Spacer's choice regrets that we don't sell toothpaste at this time. But you but do. We're always working on delivering exciting new products to our customers. No, no, we know you Thread actually wash, sell that toothpaste. And Manta floss are among the exciting line of dental goods currently in development. D do you miss eating solid food? <laughs> Don't 
miss out on these deals. You'll find none like them on all the Groundbreaker. Or anywhere in the Halcyon Colony. This is the best game ever. Do you have to sleep with that all? Trouble sleeping? Try our Lunar Eclipse Mix. That's two handfuls of pep pills <laughs> washed down with a hearty swig. <laughs> Two hour energy brew. Oh my the god. The will send you through the stratosphere and the crash will knock you out gold guaranteed. Uh, the spaces choice make you wear that. We know we does. Add an additional 10% to your purchase today and the proceeds will be donated to Spacer Cares, our premier corporate welfare program. Some reason and I don't think that exists. Choice, we care about your health and emotional well being. That's why we put Martin through six years of vendor school, only to make him wear this hat. There we go, it's coming along. Do you need me to help you get out of there? Even if my contract didn't forbid it, I think, uh, I think it's part of me now. Now, are you ready to make Spacer's Choice Lunar Green Moon Mouth Lozenges a part of you? Lunar Green, the future is Spearmint. I'm addressing the man beneath the mask. Are you okay? I, uh, you know, damn it. No slogan for that one. Uh, look, this hat, my job, it may not seem like much to a brave space captain, but they're all that I have. If there are self-made purgatories, then we all have to live in them. Mine can be no worse than someone else's. Now, if we're done with the chit-chat, I hope you don't mind if I make the most of this short life and try to be the best moon person I can be. The best moon person? Sorry if I pushed you too hard, Martin. It's fine. I should be stronger than this. Thanks for taking an interest. You're welcome, Speaking buddy. Of interest, can I interest you in some quality budget goods? And there he goes Space again. Choice. We cut corners so you don't have to. We cut corners so you don't have to. Um, I'm leaving. Bye, Martin. And now I'm not even buying. You know what? I should have check. Have you tried our dehydrated water tablets? Just add air. What? <laughs> don't take my word for it. See for yourself. Make a choice. What? Pacer's choice. Dehydrated water tablets? Uh, how does that work? Now have a look. Yeah, let's check that. <laughs> Oh, he sells all the crap we've seen already. I thought he might have some interesting things in here, but it doesn't seem like it, yeah. He sells the Moon Man helmet. And you can lie in it. It improves your lie skills. This is the best game ever. Oh, God, yes, I'm def... You know what? I'm definitely buying a Moon Man helmet. There we go. Can I, can I, can I, I wanna, I wanna, come on. It's, it's just three armor and it increases my life skill. Sadly, I can't see in, in, in like third person, but. You should give our latest product a try. Holy holy toxic free. Now with activated charcoal. Don't take my word for it. See for yourself. Make a choice. Spacer's choice. He's. Yes, there's a dialogue option. Hey, we're wearing the same hat. I got you too. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, same hat. How <laughs> right you are. They got Looks you too. Really good on you. What a snug fit on your giant head. Hope you're very happy in there. <laughs> you think he means it? I don't think he does. As a consumer-facing representative of Spacer's Choice, I'm obligated to project on his testimony, including what I just said. Wear it with pride, with hope. No one can take that away from you. I'm, I'm just really curious what happens now if we all wear it. Uh, have a look. I want to see. Because now we have helmets on. Yes. It's the, they look exactly the... <laughs> oh god, this is horrifying. I'm surrounded. Martin, help. What can I do for you? Need some Adreno? It's good for you. Spacer's promise. <laughs> Martin, Don't take look. my word for it. See for yourself. Make a choice. Spacer's choice. choice. Yes. Look. 
We're all wearing moon hats. Oh, there's no dialogue option for this. Felix and Parvati, I can't tell you apart anymore. Yes, this game is amazing. We still need to find a way to get in the medical bay, by the way, but that, that was amazing. And that was just dialogue. Um, wait, so engineering must have the repair bay, right? Um, I'm going to have to check the map, I think. Ooh. Crap. So, for some uh, things, we need the Mardet ID cartridge. I think we need that to get into the medical facility, but there's a guard over here. Hello? Okay, he doesn't have any dialogue option, but he's gonna spot me, right, if I do this? Let's see. So, slide save. And I'm not sure if they can see me now. It just, it just says pickup, by the way. It doesn't say steal. You have found an ID cartridge to use with the holographic shroud. You will now be automatically disguised when entering the associated restricted area. Okay. Then I can do that first. Because according to the quest log, I needed that exactly to get into the medical base. Let's check that out. Uh, I also need to have a buff. Because uh, I, I lose some of my stats. Yes, this is the merry band of Spaces Choice people. Uh, so that means... Can, can I... Why doesn't it... There's another one here. Can I just use... Because it said you were automatically disguised. Um, let's... I, I mean, I, I just saved. Holographic disguise activated. Trespassers will be shot on sight and fined. Your holographic shroud is activated, giving you temporary access to this restricted area. Moving drains the shroud's energy. When it runs out, personnel will see and interrogate you. Talk your way out of your inter interrogation to reset your shroud. It will get harder to talk your way out the more you are interrogated. Okay. So right now I'm fine. I need to talk to Ellie. Ooh, wow. It does drain rather quickly. Um, I don't know why my view... So, operating room or qu quarantine? Need to go to quarantine. It is a cool system, by the way. There's a reason they got this place under quarantine, right? Oh, look! They look different as well. That's cool. Um, there's a talkie machine over here. And then this. I should probably pick this. And then open up. There's nobody here. Okay. It's problematic. Is that? That might be Jesse. Um, For the last rats is on rotten time. Leave me in peace. Jesse Doyle, you there she is. Quacks do know that restful recuperation requires not being disturbed, don't you? Uh, Ellie sent me. Um, open the door before I kick it down. Should have known she'd send a bruiser after me. Damned if I don't rue the day I saved her scrawny little hide. Inadvertently, I befriended a bloodhound in the process. All right, okay, we can discuss this like the level-headed folk that we are. Seems I've got to do something before Ellie goes jabbering my business to anyone with one ear and an intent to listen. Okay, so there goes the door. Let's talk to Jesse. The truth is, I'm not sick. But if you repeat what I'm about to tell you to anyone, I will deny it with my dying breath. You, uh, ain't with the board, are you? See, I owe them. A lot. I might have missed a payment or two, and the other night I swear someone was following me back to my room. So, I hold up here to lay low. Okay. Um, and what did you do that got you into trouble? Ali asked me to help you. Udon Bedford's the board guy on the station. He'd know how I stand with them. If you can square things for me, I'd owe you one even bigger than Ellie owes me. Okay. Um, what did you do that got you into trouble? What? No, I didn't do anything. I'm a law-abiding denizen of this ship, I swear. Um, I'm, I mean, level with me or I walk right now? 
You'd let a poor, ill woman get disappeared by the board? Awfully cold-blooded of you. Though I admire your backbone. All right, I'll fess this part up too, if it means you'll help me. I'm a thief. I specialize in particularly high-end and historically valuable items. Three weeks back, I caught rumor that the Blood Tear Diamond, last worn by an heiress on the Lost Hope, had surfaced for the first time in 70 years. Sounds cool. Um, so you stole it? If I had, you'd think I'd be hiding out in the Med Bay. I was gonna steal it, lined up Udam as my buyer. He paid half up front to finance the operation. Let's just say things went sideways about the time I got my hands on the diamond, and it crumbled to stardust in my palm. Anywho, I barely made it out with my life, and nary a plan to make back Udom's deposit I'd spent. Okay. Uh, I'll talk to Udom for you. Thanks for helping me with the board. You're a real pal. Or I guess I should say, Ellie is one, huh? Okay, so now we need to talk to Ellie again, I suppose, but I need to convince Udom Bedford to clear Jesse's debts. Um, my thing is gonna run out. Oh, I can actually run. Okay, this is, this is bad. What happens? So now we're gonna be interrogated. Great. Um, hello, bye. There we go. I'm out. Nobody cared, uh, aside for, for Pravati. Pravati is still over there. Um, you know what? I do want to talk to Ellie now. I mean, we can do that next time. I'm going to make an episode out of this. So uh, next time we're going to talk to Udom and then talk to Ellie to see if she wants to join up. Because again, I feel like she's designed enough to be another companion, another redhead companion. And then, I'm sorry, Felix, but then you're out. We're going to do the, the redhead uh, squad after that. But uh, before that, I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of The Outer Worlds. And yeah, we'll see you guys next time. So thanks again enormously for watching. And see you next time. Goodbye.